Welcome back to another exciting SGC reveal. If you uh, checked in with the last episode, you saw I was pretty upset about what had gone down. Very fast turnaround, but dirt inside the slab. So I'd rather them spend another day or two and not have that happen. Hopefully it didn't happen with this, but believe it or not, this one came back even quicker. I sent these out on June 7th and got them back on June 17th. So 10 day door to door calendar day turnaround. Oh, we're already off to a rough start. My box cutters are all dull at this point. I don't feel like getting new ones or snapping off the tops. So good. All 10 of these seem to have been graded. I'm going to pull out the invoice. Oh, we only got two rubber bands this time. Last time I got four, the first time I got three. Either way, I like the black rubber bands. I don't even know if you can buy these. I never looked them up. All right, another Sam Bowie rookie card, just like the first time, but since this one was cheaper, and I think this one was probably around like a seven or an eight. I'm not going to get too excited either way. Seven, boom. So your boy's figuring it out. But again, that doesn't really matter so much. Now, uh, Jordan, this was a nice card. I almost forgot to send in an eight and a half. I was thinking a little bit more, maybe top, top to bottom. Either way, this again, if you've seen the other videos, I talk about Auction Ninja. That was an Auction Ninja card. And usually the person I get my cards from on Auction Ninja, I don't know who was collecting them before, but they're all like pristine. So that's a little disappointing because I couldn't find anything wrong with that either. Another Michael Jeffrey and an eight. I just like this card. Obviously, it's very off center. I have several of these. I think one is still sitting around. There might be another one in the stack. We'll see. Another Michael Jeffrey Jordan, Brooklyn's finest, eight and a half. Not bad. They'll sit long term. Rare air. Now, <laughs> funny because I sent this one and think this has got to be the ugliest Michael Jordan card ever. For one, you can't see a number 23 anywhere here. Two, it's oversaturated. It's like they, they cranked the uh, the warmth and the redness up way too much. Sorry, my ugly face is getting in the way of the ugly card. But really, like, what a garbage card. And for some reason, that, that appeals to me. I just, if that wasn't there, and I said, whose card is this? You probably wouldn't think it was MJ. In fact, I'd be willing to bet nobody's going to oh, yeah, it's Michael Jordan's calf musculature. Get out of here. But I like that kind of stuff. LeBron? Okay. I actually, I have a picture of him doing this exact same thing. This is in Chicago. I have a picture of him doing it from about the same distance at a game in Charlotte back in 2008. I got a really good deal on some court seats. One row all, like not like the front, front row, but you're still on the wood just behind those people. So for me, that was good enough. I couldn't even find the, uh, the court side, but... It's back when he was on Cleveland and Charlotte. I'm mean, with Charlotte, so you can get those tickets pretty cheap, no matter who you are. But I got a connection at the airport. Kobe unleashed a villain, nine and a half. Okay. Not a bad card. I really like the way that looks. This was an auction ninja card. Again, the auction ninja cards are going to grade higher. Just seems to be the pattern. And now I'm not sure this might've looked better in a tag slab because of the black feeding into the black, but still I think it looks pretty sharp. So the NBA, despite me not being a huge NBA fan to begin with, this lot has already made me a little happier and they were cheaper. So that's always a plus another Kobe nine. Again, I chose this just an iconic Kobe pose. Pretty happy. Another Kobe. Okay. Upper Deck Inspirations. Again, pretty, pretty card. And we're not seeing... Oh, no, there is. So just like with the Shohei card, just like with the Sergio Perez, there's, like, crap underneath the... You see, there's another example of it. That's underneath the slab. So, I mean, obviously, you're going to choose to send your money wherever you want to. I'm just pointing out these things and high honors, nine and a half. Okay. So let's go with the rundown. Whoops. 
not too upset. Some of the best to ever bounce a basketball. And some pretty decent grades. We'll go the number two draft pick right there. So that's that. Some of these will stay, most of them, I mean, they'll stay in my personal collection for a little while, but not very long. Oh, my skew is off. And then I'll be uh, putting them up for auction or just a straight deal once I'm done showing them off and tired of storing them. But let me know which ones you like, which ones, I mean, are you not looking at them as closely as I am? But specifically, I'd like to know if you ever had SGC submissions that came back with crap underneath the the slab and how you went about it or are they going to take care of it or am I going to have to go complain to them and, and get nothing done other than raising my own blood pressure unnecessarily. So I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate that. Hope you learned something or had a good time either way that your time was not wasted. And I will talk at you next time when we have a tag submission should be here. I don't know in a couple of days right now, they're a little bit behind where they were last time. But if they can get to me, get those slabs to me without dirt underneath, I'll, I'll wait the extra couple of days. I won't be too upset about that. Have you worked with uh, SGC or TAG before? Let me know. I have now submitted several to both. And I like the customer service. But the quality control here just isn't hitting right now. So I'm going to go post elsewhere and complain about that and see what the community says. Peace out.